This land in North Burstead was farmland which came up potentially for development in about the year 2000. The local authority archaeologists established that there was some potential for archaeology within the area so they required the developers to undertake evaluation of the site in amongst unexceptional bits of field system. They found this large rectangular pit. We found like a, a dark rectangle as we were stripping off the site and I think I jokingly said to the digger driver, oh yeah there's probably a grave. I think we initially found the pots at the one end of the cut and then thought you know, it probably could well be a grave if those are in there and then but then we started finding the bronze metalwork. Then yeah, gradually we started finding more and more stuff. So we had to start thinking about bringing a conservator in because it's a case of well, how are we going to lift this stuff. We drove up to the edge of the field, left our cars, put our willy boots on, walked across a whole series of fields, passed a great pile of spoil, and then finally ended up at, at this spot here. I remember approaching it and, and seeing the three pots and seeing rusty iron strap-like objects. And I remember getting my camera out and starting to take pictures because I was so excited at seeing all this archaeology. As I got closer and looked into the pit, uh, realised that uh, there were lots of other exciting objects. There were bright green, large bright green metal objects. Bright green in archaeology means copper alloy or bronze and it's, and it's always very exciting. I could see that there was a skull, a human skull, between the iron bands. Uh, got closer and, and realised that the, the iron bowl thing was actually a helmet. To be standing there looking into this in the ground was just a, uh, oh, it was a remarkable experience and, and, it, and it, it really did give you a buzz, you know. It gives me a buzz now, remembering it. It was a, it was a phenomenal thing. As a whole discovery it is, it is amazing. I mean, it's a once in a lifetime thing. I mean, majority of archaeologists never ever find something like this. This is the biggest discovery in my career to date. Yeah. The best way really to do it is to treat it like a mini excavation. So you split it out into grids. Once we've taken the soil away, I use a very light, gentle, gentle, gentle adhesive, which can be removed quite easily. So you have to make sure that what you're exposing is then supported in its own way. Once it's all supported, you then have to take off inch by inch your supportive work. As you go, you can then clean the surface. In the initial stages, the excavation is literally just about supporting it so that you can get it out. And then the secondary conservation work is about making sure that it's held together and its structures there. It takes a very long time, but it's all worth it in the end. We start our reconstructions by laying out all the shards and then we try and make, sort of connect the pattern of them sometimes or the profile or the colour and we work through as a team to begin to make collections of shards that look like each other. We've got the advantage of having some reports that give us some ideas of the overall original profile so you can begin to create the overall shape of the vessel. The integrity of the object has to come first. And so we do have to sort of decide when we're going from conservation to restoration. You need to be um, professional about it and know when to stop, but also how far to go. XRF is X-ray fluorescence. XRF can tell us some interesting things about the North Burstead warrior uh, and the artifacts um, found uh, with him in that it can help us understand the elemental composition of all of the artifacts. What that tells us is um, what materials were used to make the artifacts like the helmet and the decorative headpiece and how the artisans and, and metalsmiths may have put things together and we can tell those things by using XRF to tell us the elements that are present and in some cases the um, composition or how much of say copper or tin might have been used in the bronze. We had a long day at uh, Fishbourne working with our students from West Dean, uh, two of our students from the metals conservation course um, and we were able to collect all of the data that we needed 
to start to answer some of those questions from the Novium and the archaeologists about North Burstead uh, man's um, artifacts such as the helmet and the headdress uh, to try to understand those a bit better in terms of how they were put together, how they were made. How often can you be faced with material of that age in that context and be asked and trusted to actually conserve the objects? It's a, it's a tremendous privilege and one that we don't take lightly. And it's been a fantastic project for the students. We're pleased with it's going well and we're pleased with um, coming to Amy and asking for advice and observations about progress, how things are going. So that's a fantastic relationship for us to have so that students can see that we don't work in a vacuum and that we need to liaise at all times and discuss and find out what's required of us. And we're delighted to have the object in the workshop. It's been a privilege start to finish. We get our inspiration for designs from a number of different sources. We will research heavily um, and we will do inspiration trips. So for instance we went to the British Museum and met with one of their experts and she gave us a really useful background and all the information that we get from the client themselves. The designs are very much linked to the objects um, in terms of colour, um, style of typography, we link to the era. We, obviously we use beautiful photography and historic photography as well where necessary. The design process is a process of collaboration. We don't have images of how this warrior looked. Um, we have very little imagery of anything from this era. So it's really down to the viewer to use their imagination. But we can help them. And so there are being 3D renders created and we just create an atmosphere and a sense of what he would have been like. Photorealistic rendering is where you try and create digital objects to mimic real life. There is an artistic element of how am I going to present this, uh, but also how can I present this to maximise the research at the same time and also give um, as much exposure to the different elements of specialisms that go into each model. It's not just about the visual, it's about recreating the world in a way that makes sense, basically. The most interesting piece, in my opinion, in terms of me working on it and also modelling it, has been the lattice work on the helmet. We're looking at the colours, we're looking at how it interacts with the plume of the helmet. We're looking at how it might have looked on the, the warrior himself and how imposing that would have been. And so to be able to recreate that in, in 3D um, and also retrace the steps of the Iron Age craftsman that did that in a virtual setting was just very interesting and rewarding to do. The difference between a good mount and a bad mount is that you're, you're displaying the object off to its best, so the idea is that you, you won't actually notice the mount. It obviously brings the object out into its context and, and um, whether you've got a, a graphic behind it, it'll, it'll show it off to its best and really yeah, bring it to life. One of the biggest challenges we had was the actual display of the helmet itself. The original thought with the helmet was to display the, the pierced bronze pieces as they would have been on the helmet. But the, the problem with that is they're so fragile. To try and mount that and make it look as though it was actually on the helmet was virtually impossible with, without having so much mount that you wouldn't actually see the beauty of it. So we decided in, in the end it would be better to have them on panels and then depict it graphically how it, how it would have been worn. I, th I think the most exciting thing for, for us was that if you could just imagine him on the hillside, on his horse, in this shiny, glittering helmet, it, it would have been quite a, quite a spectacle. At the University of Manchester we have a wonderful museum collection which contains within it objects that myself and my students have studied that are from the same time as the North Burstead warrior. But we don't have any human remains and I'm very interested in burials and how they use the funeral itself to mourn the passing of that person. What they included with him tells us this was a, a really pivotal moment in that community's life. They send him off with full military honours. There are still mysteries to be unfolded here, still more to find out. This has been such a rewarding experience to be part of.
We're really proud to be able to have this exhibition at the Novia Museum. It's a way of connecting people with their local history and the Iron Age. So we were really, really pleased when we found that we were going to be able to have the, the North Burstead burial and keep it here in Chichester, near Bognor, near North Burstead, where it was found. The British Museum is really proud to have been able to support this exhibition and also to support that story by lending some objects from the British Museum's collection. And these are um, a complete sword a complete spear and a tiny miniature shield as well to give just a hint of what a complete shield might have looked like. We wanted to use this burial as a way of telling people all about Iron Age life which is an area of history that people don't necessarily know as much about. To be able to do that well you need to create a really engaging and interesting exhibition that people can really connect with. So the reason why we decided to display the burial in the way that it has been, we wanted to give people that same experience of how it was discovered. So we've sort of tried to have the burial in situ and then blow it up a little bit so people can get that moment of discovery. What better opportunity to learn about a figurehead on your doorstep who's a real figure in history, who saw those times of change, then come and experience it here at the Novium. Thank you.